So, I'm waiting for you to put the guts up so I can see how the sound is working. It seems to be very silent. Oh, now it's working. Somehow it feels that there's larger delay than usual. Oh, we have some someone new in the chat. Hi, going slowly nowhere. Oh, uh, I really like your uh, nickname. Yeah, these are really interesting. Like, uh, I actually could got uh, got these from uh, Finland uh, in local art store. It's not local for me, but it uh, it was art store in Helsinki, and they had these in stock, and. I have never before, I have known this exist, but I was like, I had no idea, uh, like no experience on this one. So I got the 28 set and it's, I haven't actually even opened this one, <laughs> like even this box, because I really wanted to save this for the stream. So these are from Rosa Gallery and it's there are other colors, and this says classic. I think they like their color selection or something. And these are uh, produced in Ukraine, and that was reason why I wanted to get this because I really want to support my support, give my support to the Ukraine, and I think this was like a good way to support them. So they have sleeve, and then we have cardboard mm, box. It's really nice blue tone actually, really nice tone. Oh, oh, I, I was actually like expecting this because I remember someone was saying they don't use black tins, but this tin is this really pretty petrol color, like really deep blue color. And my stream is super dark. Wait a second, you can't even see that color. My webcam has been pretty bad lately. I don't know what's the problem, but it's... So, yeah, no, I have like lights on. Yeah, it's... It's a bit more greenish than it's uppers on the stream, but it's really nice petrol color. I love when uh, manufacturers do this, like they don't use the basic black tin, because the black tin is really boring. <laughs> Ooh, they have printing on the inner lid as well. And let's open it up. Oh, there's a dog here. And more. Uh, it's my dog hair, and it's, I think it, I, I think I may open it at some point. But yeah, really nice palette box. And one thing I always look when I open new bo palette boxes is the edges. These are rounded edges, which is super good because even some manufacturers minke they let their tins to become really sharp on the edges, like they don't round them. But this is really nicely finished and rounded off. Look underneath this tray. Yep, we can lift it up. Oh, there's more uh, mixing paste. I, I don't know, does anybody use this mixing paste there? But I personally never look there. Oh, pens are not like snappy. Okay, need to be careful with those ones. And how they wrap their, their pens is a bit different as well. Ooh, uh, they have printing rosa underneath. And it's like a sticker on the top and it goes on all the sides. And there's the name of the color and the color number. And there's also pigment in information. This is to open. Oh, these pens are actually not square. They are like uh, rounded, uh, not rounded, chamfered edges. I'm really intrigued about these ones because it feels like they are really different than usual watercolors. It, like the pan is really different and I really like that they have, they clearly like think about this stuff like having different color tin and having custom pans. 
Oh, these are powered. Powered paint. And there's some kind of anti-stick slit there, so... It's pretty easy to open, even if uh, they don't have the uh, normal, you know, the... What is, it? what is it called? Like the small paper they usually have. I'm a bit worried that I will... I will have no time to write the names, so... I will stick part of the... Part of the label on the boxes. And then we have cadmium. Uh, that one is cadmium lemon, lemon. And then we have cadmium yellow light. And looking for the color section, it seems be really classic. And there's nothing wrong with that because I actually like that, since it means that there's uh, usually familiar pigments for me, and it's usually are more easier to adjust. These are really easy to open, even uh, I was first worried that they might be hard to open. But no, they are easy to open. And this, uh, they also have pigment inf information. The first color, the lemon one was pigment yellow 35, and this is pigment yellow 35, but uh, it depends on the how you prepare the pigment, the color. Like even if they have same pigment, they can be vastly different shade. Uh, then wait, like I took the small dab here. Like you can see, I, I cut this off because it has the name of the paint, and then this one doesn't have it there. Oh, hope that. Well, some pants have the name, some pants have the brand there. Oops. So I need to go to writing. Uh, no, I can do that later. I, I'm, but I'm a bit worried that I will. I will mix uh, mix up these pants. I usually have pants laid in the. Like instantly when I open them from the palette, I usually. Uh, this is cadmium yellow deep. I usually mark them with the sharpie because I don't want unmarked pants in my collection. I have quite many watercolors and I have actually <laughs> experience with uh, handmade watercolors. I had like, <laughs> I had so many unmarked pants that it, it was quite a chore to make everything. I need to look, is there? Are they in order here? I think they are. I will have the there is like the, all the colors listed. I will keep that in hand because I don't have the more stick. Yeah, this one has the same as the brand. And this one is called golden yellow. Pigment yellow, hundred and ten. Hmm, hundred and ten. It's not familiar pigment for me. I'm not like so good with the pigments that I would remember them by their numbers. But uh, at least it's not good any gonna. Let's see how it looks. Oh, it's okra, of course. It's bit uh, what are it? No, yellow okra is here, and it's pigment for the five, for the two. Interesting. <laughs> it has really f uh, funny pattern in this pan. Like, there's the oops, like a wavy pattern. I have to say, I love these pans already. Like, they are so pretty, so they are not squared. They are little, they have like uh, nice. It's not rounded, I think it's, it's called chamfer. It's chamfer edges. Gives them a nice touch. And cadmium red. So it's there. No, cadmium orange. Pigment orange 20 and pigment yellow 20, 25. 
I'm not so. Uh, I think pigment yellow 35 is cadmium, so it has cadmium in it. And I really like that they have pigment information. It's uh, it makes my work so much easier having pigment information in the pan. Because I know some people like to write that in the color chart as well. I personally did that uh, in the beginning, but at some point I was just like not doing. Oh, there's a pigment there. <laughs> oh, that's a little bit of bummer because I was thinking that I will get so fast through this I don't need to like write anything. And this one is cadmium red light. Cadmiums are colors I usually don't pick in my palette because uh, they are quite opaque and granulating. Again, there's the brand name. Pigment red 108. And this is cadmium red medium. Hi, Boxer Paint. <laughs> yeah, I like that shape as well. Like, I, uh, I don't know why, but my inner engineer loves when something is like Made, made pretty. Like this is way more prettier than having pants like regular squares. They have all edges nicely uh, chamfered on the bottom as well. And I think that gives like really finished look. It speaks for quality. These are these are really pretty pants. They are poured. That's that's also rare. Like, not all manufacturers pour their pants. Mo uh, like other way of manufacturing the pants are making them extruded. When there's like the cake in the pan. Then we have carmine. And carmine being pigment red, hundred and hundred and seventy one. That's not familiar to me, but it says light fast. It is light fast, so I trust that. Interesting. And I don't remember seeing that pigment. It might be unique pigment on this set, like in in my collection. Not not probably for all manufacturers, but it's it's not so common. Also, reds are not my favorite, so. I usually don't remember them. It's look a bit different. It's uh, more looks a bit more drier, but it's normal. Like because the artist grade watercolors doesn't have filler and the paint consistency is a bit dependent on how the what are the pigment uh, pigment itself how it's looking. Then we have a matte red, and this is a mix of two pigment, pigment red 117 and pigment red 264. I'm really bad at saying numbers, so I'm sorry. <laughs> it's funny, like uh, I said, these are easy to open, and now I'm like having struggles. But it's easier when you like to rip the whole thing. It's really dark. So, so far there has been four yellows and four reds. And now we have a purple. Uh, then we have greens. It's, I personally find a bit weird. I like to order my colors chromatically. Yeah, these are really bright oranges. I, I really, I'm really interested to see how these look when I paint, paint them on the paper. Then we have violet. Yeah, chromatically, it makes sense to have violet here, but I'm more confused like having greens here. Like I usually order them differently. Like having violet and then having blues there, uh, starting from the co like the coldest blue. But I'm keeping these ones as they come in the back pan, uh, pan, as they come in the set because I'm 
not marking this, so I make it mix up. That pigment was pigment violet 23, so I think it's the uh, dioxazine. It's really dark. Then we have olive green, and this is probably a mix of few pigments. And yes, yeah, it's, it's a mix of few pigments. It has pigment green 17, pigment yellow 1, and pigment black 7. And it's uh, the semi-transparent. It looks really nice, uh, olive green. Uh, I think the most of the olive greens tend to be really uh, on the greeny side, but that's a really nice army type of green. <laughs> then we have a green. Uh, which actually reminds me of a bit on the uh, Dan stream before me because uh, he was swatching out the uh, Talon's art creation. But their colors on there was their color were like green, blue, and yellow, or some, something like that. Really simple. So this one is green, and <laughs> no other other names. And it's pigment green eight. So I think it's Taylo, I think, if I'm correct. Yeah, it's uh, it's really nicely rounded, and also the whole palette is blue. It's not black palette at all. So I think it's. I'm really happy that I got this palette because at first I was thinking getting some loose bands, but then I heard that the, uh, the uh, palette is not. Not black, so I was instantly like, okay. I'm getting full uh, full palette. I may get some loose bands and switch some of these colors out if I. Ooh, it has some swirlies. Color is a bit weird, but I try to live with it. Uh, it was eight, PG eight. And this one is PG seven and it's called Emerald Green. So yeah, the previous one wasn't actually the Taylor. Of course this one because it's really uh, dark on the swatch there as well. Okay, it's good to have a box of paint in the chat. <laughs> you know so much of these pigments. I, I'm basically, oh, I forgot to take the tap. I'm basically just like, I remember a few pigments by their number, but that's about it. And then we have turquoise which is mix of pigment blue 50.3 pigment and mix it with pigment green 7 so it's pretty standard mix and it's have ultramarine and pg7 as taylor green Actually, when I started the watercolor journey, I was really interested in the pigments and their properties. But instantly, um, when I like uh, proceed with the watercolor and learn more technique, I got less interested about the pigments and I was just interested about the color and shade. And it's really, really weird, like shift. Like I'm a really technical person. I actually work as engineer. And suddenly I'm not interested about the technical side at all. I'm more interested about the, how the colors will look on the paper, so weird. PG8 is one... So Box of Paint says double check it. PG8 is the one that is super dark and creates Perulian Green replacement. Oh, that's good! Like, I really like Perulian Green. 
Then we have a cobalt blue. I I am worried that these little stickers will uh, escape at some point. Which is pigment blue 28. Cobalt is also one of those colors I rarely pick because I don't like uh, granulating colors. But at the same time, I know it's really, really one of those classics. Next, we have blue, which is pigment blue 15. So, pigment blue 15. Please open. I try to get it. Oh no, now it's like one of the stickers that was like, nope, I'm not opening. I think it's Halo. No, I took the one from label. <laughs> of course, because this doesn't have the. It's funny that uh, some of the bands has only the Rosa Gallery mark here, and others one has the name of the color. so hard like every other pan has been really easy and now this is going to be super hard i'm i'm happy that i have long nails because it would be much harder without the nails looks like taylor blue to me or was it ultramarine that is 15 no uh, ultramarine is 29 there's indian tone it's really, I find it really interesting, like, some manufacturers do that, that they don't mention the tail uh, in the color names. I think another one is Windsor Newton. They have Windsor Green and Windsor Blue, and those are actually tail colors. So I find it interesting here as well. Then we have Ultramarine. Now I try to stick the label in the correct slot and not to the <laughs> slot next to it, because I need that one doesn't have the sticker. And it's standard ultramarine. Ultramarine is one of those colors that almost comes in every set. It's well <laughs> it's also one of those colors I rarely use as it as own because I usually use it when I'm mixing grey, but that's about it. Then we have Intentione Blue, which is actually one of my favorite blues. And I tend to reach the Intentone Blue. It's Pigment Blue 60. Intentione Blue is one of those, like my go to blues. Uh, other blue I like is the. I think it's Sapphire Blue or something like that from the Schminke, which is the. Te old, what was it? Like Taylor Sapphire. Interesting, like you can see that the, this one has all the shiny surfaces, this one has a little bit uh, matte surface, and this one too has matte surface. Interesting. Next we have indigo. And indigo is... Indigo is a mix of three pigments, so it's not real indigo. Well, I would say naturally it's still real, but <laughs> it's pigment blue 50.1, pigment uh, violet 19, and pigment black 7. Actually, I think these are easier to uh, unwrap than pants that are wrapped to the like, uh, that have like the tin foil stuff over it and then the wrapper. And now we have yellow okra, which is the 
a regular pigment yellow for the two. I really like that they, some of these pants have the like pouring patterns on them. Them, it looks really funny. Like I can see that they have where they started to pour it. And then we have Rausina. Oh. I had like those brain fart moments when I was thinking like why why the Sienna is this color but. It's raw sienna, not burnt sienna. So of course raw sienna is lighter. But for the moment I was so confused, like why the sienna is this color? Of course it is because it's raw. Silly. And I apologize if I have, if if I lose my English because I have had migraine creeping on me whole day. So I'm probably going to just swatch these colors and. Probably not doing any paintings. Oh, there's some stuff there. Look. A little piece from the wrapper. This also looks matte. Okay, now we have the burnt sienna. <laughs> no, we don't have burnt sienna. We actually have English red. Okay. I was thinking it's burnt sienna. I'm really upset if this set doesn't have burnt sienna because it's like. All of one of my staple colors. This is pigment red 101. English red, also known as Venetian red, and it's one of the colors I don't like at all. Because I like it in the handmade paint, but some of the commercial paints are just so hard to rivet and they are often like really, uh, I would say dead. They look really flat and opaque and I don't just like them. But pigment red 101 is one of those I don't like. Ooh. Oh, the frosting. That sounds really interesting. Oh, thanks. I think I will. I have, I have to place the second order to your shop soon because I actually have been loving those uh, handmade watercolors and I feel I want more. <laughs> also, the interfere colors just like uh, uh, like blew me, blew me away and I was like I want all of them. Now we have Marsh Brown. And this was this is a bit interesting. Like it's pigment yellow to 22, pigment red 101, and pigment black 7. Because sometimes the marsh brown is purplish, and this one uh, isn't going to be purplish because it's oh, ew! It looks like oh, <laughs> it's really really lumpy and pumpy. It looks funny. Looks really different. Uh, really. It, it, it's look weird. It's look really different than other pants. It's nothing about the quality, but some pigments just <laughs> just look a bit different. Yeah, I think it's natural version. Now we have the burnt sienna. I was confusing with the raw sienna. But I think the Mars brown will. Mm, Probably be the one of the colors I may kick out in the pan and change it to the change it to okay. Now we have first pan that I can feel it's loose and it's shrinked so much when it had been dry. So I probably can, yep, I can take it out. So yeah, it has shrinked when it it has been drying. That's really common, and I think oh, most uh, board pants do that 
when you uh, are not yet used use it on them. When you use them, the water goes uh, down there and the paint dissolves and like sticks itself better to the pan. Then we have amber. Okay, amber. I have I don't know what they mean by amber because it pigment red seven. Because I'm more familiar with having burnt amber and raw amber. Just having amber is a bit confusing. And the color color yeah, color is called amber in the tire. in the acrylic letters as well. I think they are in the Ukraine or or in Russia. I speak Russian a bit and I can read the Greek letters so but the color names are translated correctly. Sepia is the next one. Sepia is one of those weird colors I find I use it uh, as substitute for the black. But at the same time I find it sometimes not dark enough. Like it's weird, it's really varies on brand to brand. I like to be really like warm black. This is pigment red 7, pigment black 7 and pigment red 177. Red pigment and sepia. That's interesting. This may be really red. Yep, it looks like that. It looks really red. So far only the uh, Rausian has been really, really dried and shrink, and the marsh brown looks a bit ugly. Then we have Payne's grey, another of my favorite colors, and sadly another of those colors that really varies to brand to brand. Like, I like, I like the one from Core, Golden Core. And they have really pretty beautiful paints gray. I, I use it and I use it often as substitute for the black. And then there's the I think memory blue new single pigment line. Uh, like they see use most single pigment in their line now. Has also really good paints gray that is like uh, I can't remember the pigment right now, but it's single pigment. Then we have a neutral black. Yeah, I'm really happy that I'm now unwrapped this and I can get this watching because I'm. I have been waiting. I was like really thinking, should I use stream on this one or should I open these ones? Because I have no idea how this will look like. I have been trying not to spoil anything. I haven't been even <laughs> uh, hanging in the Discord art servers. I have been like, whoop, being completely out of the out of the loop and trying not to spoil how this look. Because I rarely find watercolors that I don't have uh, what I was talking about. Uh, so I I rarely find watercolors that I don't have any kind of expectations or pre-knowledge. And the black was pigment blue 51, pigment black 7, pigment red 170. It has like small bits. Uh, so Janina says in the chat that Rosakalor is Ukrainian. Yeah, I know. And they share their paint making components. Nevskaya Palindra. Okay. I. Rook, don't eat those. Don't, don't eat that. Rook, don't eat. <laughs> Can you see what there's a nose? I don't know how their relations goes with the Nevskaya Palindra. But Nevskaya Palindra is... Uh, well, they have, I, I don't have their paints, but their paints look a bit different on the consistency. They are more... Uh, I would say gooey. There's actually 
interesting information. It says turn the temperature from zero and relative hum humidity not more than 80%. Expiration date unlimited. Patch number is on a production date. Okay, where's the patch number? Oh, there. So these have been produced last last year. And they have probably correct something because this is a sticker over the original pa original packaging. Yeah, we will soon see how this works out. I have a really not so much experience on, on the Nevskaya Palintra. I had sonnet set at w once and then I have had a few. Ah, yeah, but yeah, I actually I just realized that, yeah, the dam stream there was also the made date. It's really interesting. Not many uh, companies put that on the hands. And today's brush is Rosemary Co. Sable Twent. Let's start with the yellows. I'm worried that this... And the paper is actually new paper for me. I'm going to show the packaging. Uh, I got this from my local art store last time, and it's SMLT art, and it's their start pad. Start pad for what I got. It costs seven euros, so really cheap. Uh, it's cellulose paper, cold press, and 200, 240 GSM. And I got this from. Oh, oops. Nope, not that. So, uh, I use that this for like swatches mainly. My table is a bit <laughs> too small. I try to keep it, uh, keep it in the camera. Okay, these are really easy to rivet. Uh, the yellow, I, I feel it's really, really easy. And this is the cardium yellow. Yeah, lemon, not yellow. But <laughs> yeah, it's yellow, but. Named cadmium lemon. It looks really bright, and I like that. But I'm also uh, waiting this to try, so I can know is there trying shift. And next we have the cadmium yellow light. This feels really bright, like it's super saturated. But I'm not familiar with the cadmium paints because they are usually not my choice for the yellows. This, this should be opaque, but they are not terribly opaque. I don't have the uh, test line there. Then we have the Hi, Proof Proof. <laughs> yeah, you came just in time. We just unwrapped the paints and now we are on the swatching. Next one is Cadmium Yellow Deep, which looks like a bit like orange or super warm yellow. Yeah, it's really, really warm. Yeah, 
and then we have a cadmium orange which look quite muted and brownish but let's see how it's washed out this one is also easy to rivet it foams a bit actually it's in uh, I've seen some yellows do that oh this one is really nice color uh, this vibrant is really talking to me like I like vibrant watercolors I really do now I see when this try that uh, they may have a bit like they look like cadmiums they are a bit dull and um, flat they go a little bit matte when they try And then we have a cadmium orange, which looks super, super bright. Am I still in frame? Yep, I'm in frame. It's maybe a bit over exposed. I will adjust that a in the bit. Yeah, it's really orange. I try to pull it down so it's on the focus at the same time. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, because my webcam doesn't have the best colors, I'm, I think it's quite realistic. The rutile yellow. Yeah, I have the same. I, I always go with the transparent one because they. They just work better, and also in the mixes they, they work better because uh, cadmiums tend to go really, I think they muddy up the mixes and the whole mix goes really opaque. <laughs> yeah, my pe uh, boyfriend came to home and uh, Ruka was really excited about that because of course, his dog and his like main event of the day is when somebody comes home. He's really happy. Next, we have the cadmium red light. This is really strong. Like it's really uh, in my face strong red. And it actually has granulation, uh, granulation aspe aspect, and I can see here that it's actually granulating a bit. Not my favorite thing. I don't like granulating colors usually. The, uh, this one is cadmium uh, red medium, and it's also granulating, and it's also loosely in the pan, so it's like. And that is even darker. For darker reds, I usually prefer something else than cadmiums. And if I want something really dark red, I like. I'm more like cooler reds, like. I don't remember the pigment. But when they go like really wine reds, are really nice. I use them usually for shadows. But for this kind of stuff, I usually don't like them use. Yeah, these flow really nice and I like that they flow really evenly. That may sound weird, but if you have been uh, painting with uh, cores, cores doesn't flow evenly. They usually f uh, format, make really weird, like... Uh, that the cores flow really weirdly, uh, because they have a different binder. Ooh, this one is uh, karma. it's really pink. Strong pink. 
and the pigment for this one was the pigment red 171 and completely unknown to me I'm not fan of pinky pinks either <laughs> I rarely uh, paint anything pink then we have matter red and I don't even know how the matter red, red should look like uh, my usually go to red is uh, Naptol red or uh, what's it other really bright red Pyrrol red I usually go with Pyrrol reds so this is the matter red oh oh this is strong red in the like wine shade I oh, hope you made it into the class. <laughs> Have fun. And next we have the violet. This I'm most waiting. It's look really dark, so I think it's dioxazine. It's look like black. Look, it's like black in the brush. It must be dioxazine because that is super strong. That's strong. It look, still looks like black in the paper, in the mass tone. Yep, dioxin. It's really strong. And I like it. Uh, only purple I like more than dioxazine is the Guindangone purple. Because it has somehow really uh, unique shade that I even can't mix <laughs> with the colors. But yeah, this is a really nice dioxazine. Super strong, like really strong. And these colors are really easy to revet. Like, there's no problem. I, ha I didn't even pre wet these, and they are really easy. Now we have the olive green. I find it a bit weird having green next to the purples, but. It is how they are manufactured, so I keep it that way. I usually keep my palettes in chromatic order. It's really nice, and I actually really like the, this shade because it's really natural. Uh, it's quite toned down, and it seems something I can see myself using. Like, definitely, uh, if I would be painting plain air, that would be I would use like base for my green mixes. Really useful color. And I think they said in the packaging. Yeah, in collaboration with professional artist. And I'm not surprised about that because it's really feel that they have been really thinking about this stuff. Like that's really good. Good color. Next we have the green. <laughs> the green just just that is just marked as green. With us pigment uh, green eight. Ooh, I love this color. I just, I just find this lovely. It's so strong, but bright at the same time. It's oh my god, it's so pretty. Like it's gorgeous. It's just so pretty. I think I don't have a green like that, and it's single pigment. <sighs> that's that's a pretty green, and yep, it definitely will be. I have been liking this palette so much that I, it will prob probably be got like a lot of use. Also, the drying shift doesn't look too bad. Of course, it's hard to tell in person, but I usually. <laughs> Actually, usually when I do swatching videos, uh, uh, after I have swatched them, I go and watch the video and then I like skip a bit to see that like, does the color has drying shift. It's really easy to spot on the video. And next we have emerald green. Which was a phthalo green, I think. Turquoise is... Yeah, this is basic phthalo. 
green that is under every palette but is only used for mi good for mixes. Most of the time it's too bright and overpowering to every other colors. And then we have turquoise. And turquoise was mixed. Mixed. It looks really blue on the pan. It's also last on the row, so it's like clunks <laughs> to the end. Ooh! It's really nice purple. Re purple. Not purple, turquoise. But really nice turquoise. Oh, that's really nice. Much nicer than the one I have from Fminge. Yeah, that's PG7 is just like it's just maybe it would become my new favorite pigment, definitely with the golden color purple and nickel as a yellow. Then we have a cobalt blue, and it's a bit harder to rivet, but it's on. It's natural pigment, so it's expected. It's also not so strong, but it's good cobalt still. I'm I'm really bad at uh, comparing things to other other cobalts because I think this still is my first cobalt. Actually, when I started, uh, get my when I got like my first watercolor set, it was Rembrandt forty eight set. Uh, actually, I gave that set away to my sister because I just couldn't <laughs> couldn't get any use out of it, and I actually didn't like like the paint. Next one is I need to check because there's no name. It is ultramarine. Yeah. I will put probably. Mm. And for the ultramarines, I like the dance ultramarine the best. And we are expecting some correlation here. No, this is not ultramarine. It's blue. <laughs> okay, so it's Taylor. It's actually, I think it's gonna be it's sapphire Taylor. I think it's not the regular regular Taylor because it's really its shade looks much like the sapphire Taylor. It said it's the blue pigment, pigment blue 15, and no any other observations. But it's still really nice blue. Now we have ultramarine. For a moment, I was surprised that it's weird ultramarine. <laughs> I think I have a cobalt turquoise in the uh, corset. And I use that pretty often too, but the blue is just something I I just I just don't find use for it. Which one is really pre uh, bright as well, strong. Cobalt has really strong granulation effect, and it's one of those things that put me off from the color. It also seems to have a drying shift pretty major one. Now we are hitting the Indian tone blue. <laughs> Funny thing, Indian tone blue has like matte surface and it seems a bit like hydrophobic. So it's not so easily revetting. It still revets easily. It just had different kind of surface. And it is as nice as Indian Tone Blue goes. Strong and dark. Then we have Indigo. And this one I'm really excited because it's one of those colors that is a mix of few pigments, so can be quite different what I have been used. I know some some manufacturers do in indigo almost black and some has really blue indigo. So let's see how this indigo goes. 
it's really black. Yep, it's black. Super, super black. Let's see how it's on the, sh on the washes. Hmm. I don't know does the camera pick it up, but it looks a bit greenish. Yeah, it's Ruka. Ruka is wanting to go outside and it's his feeding time uh, in hour, so he is a bit whiny. But everything is good, he, is, he has no... <laughs> he doesn't need immediate attention, but he is like... He's the type of dog that just loves to make noise when he wants something. Now we have a yellow okra. Or was it? Yeah, yellow okra. It looks like yellow okra. <laughs> uh, actually, today's in Dan stream. Uh, Dan was watching the Talents Art Creation Watercolors, and the yellow okra looked like yellow and not not okra at all. It was a pretty funny moment, but yeah, this oak, yellow ochre looks as it should be. Then we have a raw sienna that confused me, because I was thinking it's a uh, burnt sienna. Raw sienna is one of those colors I think I don't even have any of my palettes. Uh, if I have it, I have it on the handmade palette actually. But it's one of those browns I just don't don't find that much of the use. Then we have a burnt sienna, which is one of my most used browns. No, it's not burnt sienna, it's the English red. And it's that, I'm in the frame, yeah, I'm in the frame still. Uh, it's that really typical English red color. Not my favorite. I like Pigment Red 101 when it's had this purplish hue, but this one is, uh, it's, it's bleh. It, it's not my favorite. I don't like that shade at all. But I don't like any English red or Yeah, box again. That's so descriptive of Ruka. Like he's like, uh, he knows that the feeding time is coming, and then he whines, just that I know that there's feeding time that is coming and it's coming. R Ruka is really funny. And now we have the Marsh Brown that is really uh, weird on the deck uh, on the surface. It feels really has some ridges. I did rivet. Nicely. Um, hmm. Looks a bit funny. Yeah, it's it's brown. It's really brown. It's transparent, but brown. Now we have burnt sienna. The one that has pan loose in the cup. Interesting, it's really orange. I don't know, do I remember my other burnt sienna wrong, but this feels really orange for burnt sienna. guys like that. He likes to sit in a uh, kitchen because his football is there and then he uses his paw to like uh, hit the edge. 
And also when I'm eating, even if it's not Ruka's feeding time, he will sit right next to his food bowl and look really miserable. And trying that he, like, trying to get me, give him something. Now we have Amber. That's weird color. It's really weird. I, I was expecting something like burnt Amber, but... But no, it's really, it's really gray is red, and the, it's pigment brown 7, also big, uh, burnt and is pigment red 101, but pigment red 7, that's really weird color, yeah the burnt is really warm, but the uh, amber, yeah. Hmm. It's really. Uh, I think their strength are in the. Like the other colors are really good and I like them, but the browns are not. Not for me. Amber seems really, really weird. Uh, is that like rub amber? Yeah, it's it must be. Uh, I think that's quite rare in the other color because I don't have even. I don't have that color. This is feels. It's weird. Then we have a sepia. So let's see how the sepia looks. And uh, sepia is really strong brown. Uh, like blackish brown, which is good. It's actually a bit weak. Since... I think... Shinga one is really black. And this one is not so black. <coughs> so for the moment, the browns, English red, uh, it's English red, but the marsh brown is really brown. It has not, nothing like it. It is nothing special qualities to it. Also, inclusion of brown sienna is weird. Usually that is not include. Um, burnt sienna is really warm. And the amber is really... Uh, it says granulating. Yeah, it's granulating a bit, but... Definitely not my favorite. This looks pretty odd. A sepia is also granulating, because it's including pigment brown 7. Yeah, it looks like burnt amber to me as well. It's not like sepia, like sepia is really dark. I would, I would said I was just like swatching these, but I will pull my swatch collection out so we can compare of these colors. After I swatch the paints gray. And for paints gray, I always weigh, uh, expect this to be really dark and blue. That's super dark. Okay, and let's see how it looks when we swatch it, uh, water it down. Yeah, it's like paint gray. That's good. It's a bit bluish to my taste, but still paint gray. And the last one is neutral black. Which is also a mix of three other pigments, and one of them is only black. It's really black. And I like that. It seems something I could use if I want to like... I use blacks when I do monochromatic paintings. Black is really nice. So here are all the colors. Now I'm closing actually the lid. So I can put this up. And sorry if I make huge noise because uh, sorry about that. 
nois. Because I need to get the Swatch collection on my drawer. <laughs> Actually my desk is antique desk. It's like really old from over 200 uh, like it's like over 200 years old so the drawers are not the easiest to pull out <laughs> it sometimes feels like workout especially if it's like humid weather and i'm pulling out the drawer it's like uh, it's like going in the gym Yeah, uh, I have lately just grown to like some flax. At first I was like really never using them, but after a while I started to like really get into them. Especially I like the Rembrandt uh, Spinel Grey, which is the one single pigment black. I, my swatch collection isn't, isn't pretty, it's like uh, jammed back here. Okay, first I want to check uh, then we have burnt umber, uh, so we definitely can see that umber is not that. It's way more brown, uh, lighter than that. And there's the... Uh, I, oh, yep. I blew it out. <laughs> Surprise. It's like, goes really like poof. And there's other handmade ones, I think. Yep. So here are the commercial swatches. Yeah, they're like it's it's hard for how to move furniture around. Like, I have had same uh, like uh, furniture replacement for a long time because I just hate m moving this around. Especially my current desk, the antique desk, like weighs so much that I need to always ask somebody to help. And like, it's not even asking somebody to help me, but help my boyfriend because it, I'm too weak to lift this up. So we have lemon yellow from Schminke, Perium Yellow Light, it's from Schminke as well, Pigment 25, okay, these have matching pigments, this is from the Rosa and this is the Schminke, and they look pretty much the same, Schminke one is a bit more lighter, let's go to the I don't have, I actually don't have sh uh, chandeliers, but I think they are really targeted towards botanical art. Okay, now we have the yellow okra. It's pigment yellow 42, and this one is also the 42. But no, actually, it's not 42. It's not single pigment. They have pigment yellow 43 and 42 there. So I actually happen to have the 43 and 42 here. So it's a mix of these two. That's really weird, interesting. Like, why mix two yellow ochres together? That's interesting, like it's... Hmm. No wonder it look it's so weird. Like it's a mix of two pigments. And then we have, um, what do I have here? I have transparent gold ochre. Hansa yellow deep, no it's not the pigment from Hue. Hansa, no, I think yellows are good. Nickel asa yellow, spinel brown. Green gold. Golden yellow. These, these also have the golden yellow, but it's pigment yellow 110. 
I don't think I even have that as the pigment here. No, I don't have it. Then we have pigment oranges. And also queen, or queen gold. No, there's nothing to compare it here. Because these are colors I... The reds I usually don't have. Here we have Venetian red from the core, which is quite similar to the English red. But I like the Venetian version more, it's a bit more darker than the English red. And also my favorite pigment red 101 is this shade, where it's really purplish, and this is Caput Mortum Violet. I have a few Caput Mortums here. Cadim Red Light, do we have that here? Yes, we have. It's Cadim Orange is there. Cadim Red Light is that. Then there's the Cadim uh, Red Medium, it's this one. Same pigment as the Cadim Red Light in the Schminke. They are pretty close. Schminke is a bit more darker, maybe. Uh, what I was looking at... Uh, oh, the Carmine, 170. That sounds so odd. Like, I have a Queen Rindy Cone, but... 177 is next. It was not that. So, I don't... So, the Carmine one is pigment I don't have. I have Scarlet, Pyrrole, Winter... Wine Deep. Actually, their mat there has... Uh, win, uh, the pigment red 264 and they also have the where is it? the pigment corius in permanent alizar and crimson so these two mixed together it's a bit sad I would uh, see this one because it feels uh, I, I you, actually this winter red is one of my favorite reds like it's Maybe they used the scarlet bit tone it down. Yeah, Caput Mortum is my favorite. Like for the shadows, it's just it's just best. Oh, here yep, uh, it's mm, this is actually not Marsh Brown, but it's Marsh Violet. <laughs> it's pigment mix. Okay, now we get into burnt sienas. And here we have burnt sienna from Schminke. It's pigment red 101 and pigment black nine. Uh, this ha this is single pigment. Burnt Sienna, the Pigment Red 101. Why don't I have any other Burnt Sienna's here? What? <laughs> of course, because Burnt Sienna, it, it isn't usually Pigment Red 101, I think. I think it's usually Pigment Brown. Then we have Ultramarine Violet now. Oh, we have Dioxazin from the Goro. I think this is even darker. Oh, it's close to the Windsor and Newton. So that's, that's that. Then we have Magneta, but it's not the color, it's not the carmine. Then we have some pretty violet mixes. We are going to the blues next, so we can compare those. Okay, we have Taylor Blue Green Sage. And this one is, th is the Taylor Blue. And it's the same pigment Taylor, but it's a pigment blue 15 and not 3. So it's a really different one. This is the green side. There is a slight difference to it. There is the one that I like, which is Taylor blue sapphire. And there's the like the regular Taylor blue. It's like between these two, I think. What was their Indran tone to it? It's pigment blue 60. There's Coro Ultramarine. Which is somehow really weak. I don't know why. I think the Swatch maybe. And also Schminky Ultramarine. Finest. So this one is way too bright than the other ones. Oh, there's Cobalt Blue. I have actually Cobalt. And this is from 
I think uh, Roman small. So I'll take cobalt, looks about right. And then there's the Indian tone blue. I don't know why it's so light, but it's... Oh, there's the Schminke, Delft blue, which has same pigment. So the Indian tone blue is really blue. Like if you compare here, this one is more muted tone. This one is way more blue. I actually prefer the Delft blue color. I like it to be a bit more muted. But that's really blue. Even if it's single pigment, it's... Hmm, it's weird. I find it always interesting, like, compare what... Uh, like having my swatch stack here and go to and compare the colors, because... It, uh, indigo from the core. This looks really, <laughs> really funny. It's maybe not worth comparing. Let's take indigo from the Schminke. So I was right, this indigo looks a bit more greenish than the indigo in the Schminke. Schminke use different uh, mix, they use Talo and Synthet Indigo. Now we are getting into greens. And we are starting with pigment green 7, because I don't have any of this, this color. And Talo green looks like Talo green. It's no surprise, because that's really standard color but I'm really happy with this green one it's it's just perfect and I'm probably going to going to be the one color that makes me use this palette yeah Delft blue is is really gorgeous color it's one of those colors I actually I have been bought as single pan I think it's now is in my schminke palette then we have sap green. Ooh, interesting. We don't have sap green in this palette. But the sap green from Core is... No, it's not close to olive green. That's more olives. <laughs> more olives. <laughs> more brownish. Now we're getting into the pry browns. This is Italian burnt sienna. It's a really light sienna, but it's more brown of course. Because brown... Pigment brown 7. So it's same as the Amber. Cyprus Point Amber? No, it's mixed more like Mars Brown. Transparent Brown Oxide. This looks more like the Burnt Sienna because they are same pigment, but this one is brown and this one is more reddish. Okay, now we have Raw Amber here. It's from the core. And it's not matching even. PG8 Sonic and Whiteness. Okay, I have to check on those because I think I might want another, another one of that pen. Uh, my local art store sells Sonnets and White Knights uh, in loose pan, so I can get it there. But look at that! It's Rav Amber. It's pigmented 7. This one is called Amber, so it's like Rav Amber, but it's, it's really greenish. It's like... And also at the same time it's really greyish, like it's really muted. That's, that's more like the brown I like. Yeah, they they brown uh, they browns are not good actually. I I have to say that it's they are not not for me. Then we have ivory black. Not their black is multi multi pigment black. I don't think lunar black. I think it's a really pretty one. It's granulating. Then we have perulane. Okay, we have Schminke Sepia. Schminke Sepia is much darker and grayer, because this one is really brown still. And I prefer my Sepia to be more close to black. Then we have Schminke, Schminke Paints Gray. And this one is actually Cors, Cor, Spain, uh, Spain, not Spain's Gray, Paints Gray. These are these are quite close together. Then we have some other grays. Aquarius on Xenelier. Titanium. Then we have actually some Xenelier paints I don't have anymore. There's burnt umber that is really weird color. Yeah, 
Yeah, uh, the amber actually felt a bit gloopy in the pan as well. Like it has that like weird feeling. But yeah, that's more greenish than anything else. Like greenish amber or something. It doesn't look like a raw amber to me. So let's put, put that back there. And I think I have a I have handmade watches there, but they're all here pretty tight. So we may have some problems to get this out. There's burnt amber. Uh, which is not matching with any of these. It's pigment brown seven. I don't remember who from who that was. And then I have I think I have one color I'm thinking it's look so much like this one. And it's called green umber or something. Then I have all the pretty interfere colors. <laughs> of course. Uh, yes. Let's go to the front. I'm I'm pretty sure I have the color here somewhere. Or does I have this? And I just checked like I have all the swatches here. And that's way too too purplish. I just can't find it, but I I remember having it's called like greenish umber or something. Hi Stefan. Ooh, pure art on the guitar. Yeah, actually, one of my friends uh, builds guitars, and uh, he was actually asking at one point, from, "Do I want to do some, some like design for him?" But that would be really cool. Like, I actually uh, prefer to do pyrography on the other than like just I just like to do it on the things like. I have had some 3D puzzles that I have been doing, and also some more, some more like chest and stuff. I couldn't find the greenish uh, answer for the greenish umber. Actually, no, no, I actually remember where I have seen this green one. Yep, it's. It's, yep. Uh, if you remember, uh, it's this one. This is pigment. Uh, pigment green eight, probably it's the same pigment. Funnily enough, like suddenly it makes all sense. Like this one is quite close to the amber they have here. Also, the black is really close to the one, but this one. These ones are the super, super old uh, Leningrad watercolors I have, which are on the plastic case and they are, uh, all of the wrappers were in the, like, in Russian, and there's the year it has been made, and because it has, like, still the, uh, like, well, it's dated because it's made in USSR, so in Soviet Union. But yeah, that's yeah. There's the color. It's probably the same pigment. But also, I'm surprised that browns match because that that amber, and I think this one is called amber as well in the set.
That's so interesting. And also this one has these weird many yellows. But yeah, we got the swatch of the rosa gallery, watercolors, and this seems to be okay. Browns are a bit weird, I would say. Mm, they are they are just weird. <laughs> really weird. Uh, but the other colors have been really good and I think for this palette I have to look what is Rosa Gallery color uh, selection. I think they have pretty wide selection of the colors. I will probably throw uh, with some of these reds out and choose even darker red. And for reds, English red is definitely going. I will change it more purple hue. <laughs> yeah, the zippy is like. Yeah, the, and the browns are just confusing. Like, the brown sienna is super warm. It's really hard to. I was thinking it's so warm, but uh, doesn't really actually. Ah, it's I said I was in the stream, but still I need to do some color mixes because I. I just can't get my mind out of it. So let's take the paper. It's the same paper as. Oh, I have even better. I have one actually scrap piece of paper here. Here. <laughs> I tried to make squares and they didn't match. So. Let's open the palette. And um, and the ultramarine, it's this one. And mix it with the uh, burnt sienna, which is this one. Because this is one of those mixes that I almost always do, and all the time as well. And it should uh, bring really nice uh, gray tone. I think I might have too much burnt in. Yeah, it's turned to nice brown, but nope, I'm not looking for that, I'm looking grays. Okay, now we have gray. Okay, let's see, can we get it a bit more? Yeah, they still neutralize each other quite well. Sorry that my mixes are pretty uh, pretty small. But it, uh, it looks like... You know what? It actually looked a bit greenish to me, which is not not what I want in my go-to brown mixture. It looks greenish, especially in this bigger. So it means that uh, raw sienna has some yellow component in it. You know, it's not. It actually doesn't have a yellow pigment, so it means that it has. It's too yellowish. Yellow is to counter it, so that's just weird. Weird mix. It is like greenish. Greenish color. Ruka, what you're doing? <laughs> Ruka is sniffing something really, really hard. Oh, that's funny. Okay, what else I want to mix? Mm. I, I try to think what I usually like to mix. I usually uh, do... Uh, it's really hard actually to so, so suddenly think about what I usually do. I like to mix... That's one of the... Let's try the... Let's go try this green I really liked because I haven't seen it before. Well, I have seen it before, but I haven't used it much. And 
let's try to mix it with a lemon yellow because I want a nice strong neon lime green and I get that yeah that's good that was what I was after then I want to We have the DXs in purple, but I want to test how the carmine will work in purples. So we have the carmine and then we are taking the I think I need to go to ultramarine. Yeah, they make good, but I would want it to be a bit, maybe brighter. It's still a bit dark. Like even if I water it down, it's it's not so bright. But usually purples are pretty hard to do. What else I want to do? I'm really trying to think mixes I usually use when I'm painting. And there are not many of them. I, d I don't know why, because I'm so used to working in my Schmincke palette that I so think the Schmincke colors. I actually want to try out... Uh, let's take the Carmine here. And uh, the PG8, and I want to see how how this mix behaves because I'm expecting interesting. The carmine overpowered it. So that's a bit more green, and then a bit more carmine. And we get pretty dark brown and muted. Uh, let's test with uh, again with the carmine, and, and then I'm going to mix it with dioxin. And this is how I usually do my color mixes. Like I mix colors that are already really close together. But the oxygen is really overpowering so it doesn't it doesn't do much. It's really really strong color. So let's add a bit more of the carmine. Oh we get nice nice red there. What else? What else? Hmm. Other really interesting mix. This may sound really funny, but it's mixing with uh, black. Oh, black behaves oddly in the palette, and I'm going to mix that with the yellow. If I can find water that's clean enough. To And since black is usually really bluish, uh, I can get a nice olive green out of it. Let's try with the sepia. Not the paint gray, actually. No, not sepia. Uh, because with paint gray, it should turn more greenish. With this. And my yellow always turn a bit green because I'm I use it often for the mixing green. Yeah. We get a bit brighter. Brighter green there. One last mix and then I'll be going to do evening stuff and sleeping because it's pretty late 
late here and also we had a uh, change in the I almost said time zones. No, we didn't change time zone. Uh, the summer time. So clocks got changed. I really want to add amber in this mixes because for it's this one. Because it's so weird looking one. It has the gooby feeling actually. Really gooby feeling. It's It is colorized stair and it's like really feels a little bit like concrete, it, it, like it's not not interesting. Let's let's mix it with the potato, uh, not potato, cobalt. And let's see what we get. We should get release uh, hmm. That's a nice mix. Really nice mix. I want more of this olive green. And I'm mixing it with the uh, PG. Yeah, PG. Actually, this PG green is now like overpowering this one. Let's do it a bit more. But yeah, it's. Just like sap green. Yeah, I think the. Uh, yeah, the dioxin violet is one of those colors that is like really. Uh, it's really strong. It's quite overpowering in the mixes, and it's it's really light hand in the mixes. I would say. Still the swatch card, and yeah, thanks everybody in the chat. And it was nice to see some new people also in the beginning. So I will end the stream now. So thanks everybody for watching and swatching with me. It was really fun. So bye.